spend some money today. Forgive me for I have sinned. Ooh wee! I just bought myself a little night vision scope to go on the impact. So tonight, tonight is gonna be fun. I've played around with it a little bit. I've got it updated and it's halfway charged. So let's have a look in the box. This, this is the Excite 4K Pro. They call it a 4K Pro because it shoots in 1080p. That makes about as much sense to you as it does to me, but that's what it's called. So three to 14 times zoom range which is uh, pretty uh, optimistic for a digital magnification because this is a digital rifle scope. It's basically a infrared camera with recording capabilities set up like a rifle scope. So you can uh, see stuff in the dark and the stuff in the dark that you can see can't see you seeing it. So good times, good times. Has a lot of funky little features, but uh, this is what it comes with. You get uh, a little bit of literature Hang on to that, you're gonna need it for the instructions. Never be afraid to read the instructions. A nice Element Optics-esque uh, neoprene cover to go over the scope, lovely. You get a, uh, an eyepiece, I guess, to uh, shield the bright image that comes off the uh, little viewfinder. You get a sunshade. I love it when scopes come with a sunshade, that's great. What else do you get? You get three different rings Two uprights, one of which has a uh, little side-mounted Picatinny for the included IR Illuminator, which is nice. Boost your power when you have a moonless night. See a little better. I like that they include that. A battery would have been nice, but I guess I'll just take the battery out of my torch and put it in this and hope for the best. It takes an 18650 too, so you won't, you'll have to uh, get the right battery. Don't just buy double A's and expect that to work. So I'll put that aside over here. It's all packaged quite nicely. And the piece de resistance. The scope. Very nice. Some very clear instructions. Focus the distance on the front. So I guess that is your equivalent of parallax on a scope that doesn't actually have any parallax because it's a camera. Uh, zoom level on the side. Uh, Bring the reticle into the focus with the uh, ocular ring and a couple of buttons on the top with on the side we have a USB-C charging port love that it's USB-C that's so much better than um, the older USBs it's much quicker and much more powerful and a slot for your SD card I took the SD card out of the camera phone that I normally use for my target camera um, because this is essentially my target camera now as well so We'll just use the um, the internal memory on that old S7 and that'll have to do until we run out. So, good, good. It's a 128 gig card. You can go all the way up to 256 gig with this. And uh, the way it records is recoil activated. So I've got this one set to record um, 15 seconds before and I think 20 seconds after it feels that uh, jolt of recoil because there's a little accelerometer in there that controls it. So should be quite delightful. It works in daytime as well. Um, and yeah, it's a great all round scope as far as I can tell. I'll have to uh, put it to the test. We're gonna go down and zero it, get it ready to rock and uh, hang out tonight. I reckon we'll stake out the backyard tonight and see if anything delicious walks past. Alrighty then, you may notice that uh, I have some other goodies here. I bought some other stuff as well, which is uh, probably, probably should have waited for a little while before I did that, but it's here now. So extra videos coming soon when I build out my little budget 308 build. So that'll be fun. Hoping that the ranges will open again soon. Lockdown's kind of winding down a little bit here in Australia. We've got a very low number of cases, so not a great deal to worry about. We're all social distancing and all that stuff, but aside from that, life goes on. Put you in a nice little cosy blanket. It is winter after all. Let's have a look at these rings. Decide which ones to use. Long one forward. Long one forward is more aesthetically pleasing to my eyebrows. Now my bubble levels that I normally use to level up a scope all have magnets on them. So I don't think I'm going to use them to level the scope 
The scope itself has a uh, inclinometer inside it and you can see on the edges of the sight picture that um, it tells you whether or not it's level so I'll just level that up to zero degrees and uh, hopefully that will be good enough. If not, we'll have to uh, figure something else out. There she is boys, the finished product. We've got the uh, sunshade on, we've got the IR illuminated torch just punched onto the side of the impact there. We'll give that a go. If that doesn't work out well, I'll um, chuck it on the top and we'll put that other weird pointy ring with the extra Picatinny rails on. Um, but I reckon that should work just fine there. So, good, good. Very comfortable, lovely picture. Very happy with that. Today is a good day. Let's go and shoot. All right. Recording. Beginning, all right. Do the odd clap clap to sync up. Lovely. Let's do some shooting. Just find us a little hole. I'll warm the gun up, warm myself up. Do a few cruisy groups. We'll go for the middle one at the bottom. Not sure where that went. Let's zoom it on in. All the way to 14. Ah, uh, there we go. Yep, I was right. Yep, all right. Okay, so I think this is gonna stop recording when I do this. It's a nice little feature because um, obviously you can't see what I see, or I don't think you can anyway. Um, it keeps the original reticle where it was and moves the superimposed reticle to where you were before so you can sort of move the gun around as long as you get back to where you were before and then double check your original point of aim it's pretty easy to get this thing zeroed accept that save and exit lovely all right and we'll try again oh yeah lovely we're on boys we're on I reckon we might go across and up ever so slightly. A little teeny winty bit. Surprisingly clear for a digital zoom. There we go. That'll do us. Nice. I love it. This thing is great. Sick. So, a quick looky-loo. So, um, I tried to get a couple of shots down here which is probably a little bit foolish I think they were landing through this big hole here so I moved up onto the target started aiming here and I noticed this happening down here but I didn't trust myself didn't know if those were fresh holes or not so I moved it even higher and started aiming here and then started landing down here so I moved the crosshairs in the scope from all the way up here all the way down all the way across with the first superimposed crosshair still up there my little black dot was pretty much in the middle there, so I was happy with that. Came down here, shot uh, this one, and it was a little high right, and then moved the crosshair a little bit again, and that's about as good as, as I could hope. I reckon anything more than that, and that's all just human error. So, yes, and we all know me, I have plenty of human error. <laughs> so, so far, very happy. This thing is uh, fairly user-friendly. Um, I spent probably half an hour doodling around with the settings um, but I'm pretty happy with it. It seems like it's a reasonably well thought out menu system. It's not too convoluted. It would be nice if I could find a way to remove the little... what do you call it? The ATN watermark that the video comes up with but I don't know, probably just zoom the video in a bit and uh, crop it out but we'll see how we go we'll see how we go so it films in 30p 60p and 120p so that's normal speed um, two times slow motion and then five times slow motion for those big gratuitous explodey shots so I think we'll uh, we'll shoot some cans of shaving cream at some point and film them in slow motion and uh, see how we go with uh, with a bit of a hunt tonight we might get some nice slow motion tonight too so it also has a selection of different reticles I'm going to try and find one that's something close to a mill hash reticle like the one in my Schmidt and Bender. I don't know if it, there will be something that I can use like that, but um, yeah, there's all like 
little red dot sighty type reticles and all sorts of cool stuff that you can choose from but for this particular job I need uh, basically one MRAD up and one MRAD low so that I can range and then not have to fiddle with the ballistics in the computer because it doesn't do my BC. Look at that, that's so much better. That is perfect. So something to note, the uh, reticle actually looks a little bit different um, in the recording as to what it does when you're actually shooting. It's, a lot, it's uh, quite a bit more detailed when you're shooting. I'll see if I can find some pictures of it and um, splice them in. But uh, yeah, this is a reasonably accurate representation of it, but um, the, the actual reticle that I can see through the scope is quite a bit more detailed. I have tried to put my um, RX100 scope cam on there, but it uh, doesn't fit, so I'm going to have to figure something else out for that. This is just to give you an idea of uh, what the night vision looks like during daylight hours. Surprisingly useful, perfectly safe to do apparently, doesn't burn the scope out or anything, so giddy up. There you have it, interesting to see how that's going to look at night. Well, the shadows grow long, the sun is setting, life is beginning. And so are the mosquitoes and everything else, the crickets are chirping. So I'm going to go and put my scope on charge and uh, we'll get back to you when the sun's gone down. Beautiful night for a bit of a hunt. It's Friday night, we have a full moon. This is with no illumination. Let's crack on the old IR torch. So it's low power, medium power, high power, looking pretty good. I think I need to aim the actual torch itself a little bit better. I think it's aiming a little bit low. But either way, don't really even need it. This would be a great solution for uh, YouTubers in particular just talk to your scope. I love not having to carry a camera. Wonderful. meter gong, 120 fps slow motion, standing, off hand. No worries, nice and easy. So there you have it folks, a uh, quick first look at uh, my nice new night vision site. Um, Initial impressions are that it is a very uh, versatile little piece of gear. Use it in the day, use it at night, use it to record your hunts, would we'll make whatever little vlog you want. Um, would be great for uh, wildlife watching, I think. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, carry the, just mount the torch to the, um, the scope and take it off the gun and go wander around in whatever forest you've got and take your footage of wild animals at night. Would be pretty cool, would be a good thing. I reckon some uh, a good set of binos would be nice too that uh, that do all the same things. I reckon that would be great to have. But um, I'm very happy with it so far. The footage that actually comes out of it doesn't look as good as it does uh, when you actually look down the scope. It's a lot clearer um, in real life when you're looking through it than, uh, than what you see that I've presented to you so far. Um, that may just take some uh, tweaking and um, messing around to see if I can figure out the best way to uh, present that but yeah it, it just be aware that it does actually look uh, really good through the scope and the uh, illuminator is quite effective um, you have to focus it so you just do that by um, twisting the end of it and for the majority of my footage I had it um, zoomed in too much and it was sort of aimed a little bit low yeah, you sort of have to get that set up and sort of test and adjust and but that's all good This is all just little teething problems. There's nothing uh, nothing that can't be fixed with a bit of uh, Allen keys and time and effort so we'll get that done and I don't think um, There are lots of other options that you can upgrade from this 
particular IR illuminator, but I don't think I'll be upgrading for a while. Um, I'm pretty happy with this one. It definitely um, lights up the whole area uh, when you're looking at it through the scope at least. It doesn't really look that great on camera, but um, it looks really good when you look through the sight itself. Um, and it throws that IR beam really far too. You can see, well, well I can see on my property because I've got a fair amount of open pasture, I can see about 200 meters. So pretty happy with that. It's a lot further than I'll be shooting with this thing. So all good. Hopefully I'll be able to bring you some more hunting footage. I have been out the last couple of nights, but there's nothing out at the moment. We've, apparently we've had some foxes move through, but uh, I haven't seen any of them. So unlucky me and all the toads are hibernating because it's too cold. The pits of winter have definitely set in and it's uh, a little bit chilly for most of the wildlife around here. So, But I will keep wandering around in the bush after work and hopefully I'll be able to bring you some uh, some good hunting footage. But yeah, I'm, I'm very happy and very excited and I think it's a, uh, it's a great little piece of gear. So well done ATN. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.